So as most people know, the internet is a place where discussion never really makes any progress and people tend to argue about the same things for years on end, which never ends up going anywhere. One such topic is the comparisons between Goku and Superman. As I mentioned before in my review of Death Battle's Goku vs. Superman episodes, ever since Dragon Ball Z came to American audiences in 1996, comparisons between Goku and Superman have been never-ending due to their backstories and the English dub altering Goku's personality to be more like Superman. And this has led to never-ending claims of Goku being based on Superman, since Goku was revealed to be sent to Earth as a child from a now-destroyed alien planet and ultimately serving as the inspirational, super-powered main protector of Earth throughout the series. Despite the fact that Goku's main inspiration from Akira Toriyama's own word had been stated to be Sun Wukong, among other popular Asian figures like Jackie Chan and Bruce Lee. Now, to deny Alien from Destroyed Planet as a Superman reference is just plain dumb. That aspect of Goku is definitely a nod to DC, even more overtly in Dragon Ball Minus. But that's ultimately where the Superman inspiration on him ends. Even Goku's origin itself, while referencing Superman, still has numerous aspects that can be traced back to Sun Wukong, such as Goku coming out of a pod that fell from the sky, just as Wukong hatched from a rock that fell from the sky, and both of their aggressive natures led them to falling from a great height, which ultimately led to them changing their ways. Even the main plot of the Saiyan Saga, which some have compared to Superman 2's plot, with both involving the hero fighting against three antagonists from their own home world, has roots in Journey to the West, as Sun Wukong was actually one of four celestial primates, just like there was four Saiyan survivors. And please forgive my butchering of this name, Vegeta's arc as a prince, who was once a rival turned close ally of Goku, ultimately being similar to Prince Nuja from Journey to the West. Again, I'm sorry if I butchered that. And even Superman himself has been compared to the real Sun Wukong by Asian authors for decades, even before Dragon Ball and Goku's creation. As both Sun Wukong and Superman were both beings who arrived to Earth in objects that came from the sky as members of a rare species, Kryptonians and Celestial Primates respectively, who were both born with incredible powers and were raised among earthly beings who they resembled but always felt different than. Both even became heavily revered figures and champions of said people they were raised among on Earth that possessed heat vision, the power of flight, and being stronger than steel. The character of Stone Man, a Thai comic, that quite literally puts Superman into the plot of Journey to the West highlights this. Which is one of the funniest things I have ever discovered on the internet. It's such an amazing coincidence that Wukong and Superman ended up being that similar. Because you know this wasn't intentional. But beyond the similarities between these three, there's another character in Dragon Ball who has always had way more in common with Superman than Goku. One whose design, history, and ultimate role as a superhero makes him the most Superman-like character in Dragon Ball. Drum roll, please. Superman! Nah, I'm just kidding, he's a Dr. Slum character. I'm actually referring to Gohan and the Great Saiyan Man. So much of the Great Saiyan Man is a huge love letter to superheroes, not just with Superman, but also with Kamen Rider, down to the poses they make, the design of their costumes, and even this cool wrist suit-up sequence that they both have. Even the name Saiyan Man works as a reference to Rider Man, the second main rider of Kamen Rider V3, also fitting given that Gohan was basically the secondary protagonist after Goku and Z. And this name also doubles as a similarity that he has to Superman too. To clarify this, let me describe the Great Saiyan Man's backstory real quick. He's a young man who was raised in the countryside, but actually has alien heritage and is viewed as the strongest guy on the planet, at the time anyway, that moves to the city and becomes a superhero who can fly, that wears a red cape, which writers don't really have, while also leading a double life as a nerdy guy with a humble profession, scholar, who falls in love with a strong-willed woman that he meets in the city. If we want to go even further, Goku dying when Gohan was younger adds even more parallels to the Christopher Reeve Superman movie, where Jonathan Kent died when Clark was a teenager, so both grew up alone with their mothers and dealing with the loss of their fathers, who are also their main guiding figures. And this next one I find very interesting to mention. It's often discussed between Clark Kent and Superman about which is his true identity and which is the mask. 
Though, of course, in the media, it depends on the writer and the version of Superman being discussed, since they all have kind of different ideas on it. In Gohan's case, the nerdy persona is very much who he actually is, while the great Saiyan man is an act that he puts on when fighting criminals and is basically just him goofing around. So depending on the version you look at, this either makes Gohan even more like Superman, or adds a nice little contrast between them. You can take it however you like. Now, some might say these similarities between Gohan and Superman are coincidental, and that these are just Kamen Rider references. But I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. If there's one thing that nobody can deny about Toriyama is that man loved his puns and references. Throughout the story, there are so many meaningful puns and references to pop culture, like Superman, who I mentioned before. Toriyama was way more clever of a writer than most people, and even himself, would give credit for. And even if you want to say that these are coincidences, that still makes Gohan more like Superman than Goku has ever been. Especially with the mentions of Gohan being the main defender of Earth just as recently as the last chapter of the Super Manga. Honestly, I'm shocked that comparisons between Gohan and Superman aren't made more often. Like, of course, Goku is the main character, but Gohan was easily one of the most popular characters in the series. Sure, his popularity definitely dipped a bit due to his very minimal role that he had throughout most of Dragon Ball Super up until the recent superhero movie, but he was still many people's personal favorite character throughout the whole series. I'm pretty sure the Saiyan Saga being most people in America's introduction to Dragon Ball, which starts with Goku's origin being revealed, while Gohan's stint as a costume superhero wouldn't happen until the Buu Saga is the reason for this. But the fact this is also Gohan's introduction into the series, which reveals his alien heritage too, and while the Great Sandman isn't relevant to the narrative of the Buu Saga after the Z Fighters leave the tournament to fight Buu, it's still a pretty popular and remembered aspect of the, that arc that's been a consistent part of the video games for decades at this point. And if we're being honest, even though it was very short-lived in the manga, Goku's connection to the Superman, being the, his origin in the Saiyan Saga, also is extremely brief. Yet that aspect of Goku's character is constantly brought up in regards to his comparison of, to Superman, while Gohan's kind of isn't as much, even though many of the similarities still apply to him as well. Plus, Gohan's personality was always a bit more altruistic and more champion of justice than Goku's was. Plus, Gohan's main role throughout the Buu Saga has been a topic of discussion regarding his character for decades now, so it surprises me that more people didn't put the start of Gohan's story in Dragon Ball to its end to make the connection like this. And honestly, that's all I got for this video. I've thought about this topic on Twitter for quite a bit now, and I've discussed this with numerous other people before, so I felt this would be a perfect topic for a video discussing it, since I have never seen many big channels talk about it. I figured I may as well do it myself. Special thanks to Jordan Lee for the information on Sun Wukong and Journey to the West, and thanks to my friend Yash for the art and the thumbnail. The links to follow them will be in the description below. And if you liked what I had to say here, please do me a favor by liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, and following me on Twitter and TikTok. I'd really appreciate it. My next video should be my review on Death Battle's Android 18 vs. Captain Marvel. I'll see you then. Thank you guys, and have a nice day.